Ball lightning is one of the strangest phenomena on our planet. It is usually seen during thunderstorms as a ball of light about the size of a grapefruit, with the intensity of roughly a 40 watts light bulb. It moves at about walking speed, roughly a meter above the ground, and lasts about 10 seconds. It has been seen by hundreds of people for hundreds of years in almost every country of the world, but has remained something of a mystery. A ball lightning began in the 1960s when I was working for Westinghouse Research Laboratories in Pittsburgh in the USA – working on the theory of cooling air formed from electric arcs and circuit breakers. Next to my office was the office of physicist Martin Uman who now, having written three textbooks on lightning, is regarded as the world is leading lightning scientist. Ball lightning was just hot air produced from a lightning strike the ball of hot air being so large that it cooled only slowly, giving it a lifetime of seconds. However, there was a problem with my hot air theory, hot air rises and ball lightning does not generally rise. In 1969, after the contract period had expired, my colleagues and I concluded we still had no idea what ball lightning was. While many sightings of ball lightning have been made outdoors, it is also seen inside houses. In fact, a recent French survey of 350 sightings in France found far more observations of ball lightning inside houses than outside. Perhaps even scarier, ball lightning has been seen inside of airplanes. Luckily, it seems the ball lightning that appears inside of houses and airplanes is harmless and no injuries have been reported. I have heard one report of ball lightning in a plane passing right through or around an aerostas as it traveled down the central aisle of the plane. So how do these balls of lightning get inside houses and airplanes? In addition, why does ball lightning usually move? 19th century depiction. People claim to have seen ball lightning entering a house through a closed glass window, yet subsequent examination of the window reveals no damage or even discoloration of the glass. There have been hundreds of papers written in scientific journals speculating on these issues variously assigning the energy source of ball lightning to nuclear energy, antimatter, black holes, mazars, microwaves. A recent theory about ball lightning is that ball lightning is a ball of burning dendrites of silicon fluff formed after a lightning strike vaporizes material from the ground. However, it seems impossible that such a mechanism could cause ball lightning inside a house or airplane. We propose ball lightning is powered by ions charged particles formed in the atmosphere, particularly from lightning, where columns of ions kilometers in length are produced from a lightning strike and stepped leaders paths of ionized air. In this way, ball lightning does not pass through closed glass windows, but is formed on the inside surface of the window by ions piling up at the outside surface of the window. The piled up ions on the outside surface of the glass which is an electrical insulator, increase the electric field on the inside of the glass, and can initiate ionization, that is, the creation of charged particles. Charges of the opposite sign to those outside on the window will be attracted to the inside of the window leaving a charged sphere of plasma free to move away from the window. This discharge is ball lightning. Using the conventional equations for electron and ion motion in an electric field, we were able to predict such a ball-like structure from a stream of ions affecting glass. The energy source is ions left in the atmosphere after a lightning strike. The roughly 10-second lifetime of ball lightning can be explained as the time taken for ions to be dispersed to the ground. The ball moves due to electrical forces from other ions that have collected on insulators, such as those that exist on the walls of rooms or aircraft. For instance, Ions from the ball lightning discharge can collect on a plastic or wooden surface if the ball meets it, repelling the ball and giving the appearance of bouncing. Several of the observations in aircraft have been when there was no evident thunderstorm. We postulate that the ions in this case were produced by the aircraft's radio antenna. If this is true, such experiments for the production of ball lightning should be possible, independent of the power sources of natural lightning which typically generates up to 100 million volts. If these experiments come to fruition, it is highly likely that, in the next few years, the long-standing mystery of ball lightning will be definitively solved.